I teach grades K through five at my elementary school in Stevens Park. Hi, I'm Ryan Menning. I am mostly a stay-at-home dad. I've been overseas and a long-time member of Park. Um, I'm Anya, and I'm a senior at Eastview. I'm Laura Deviso, and I'm a stay-at-home mom of three, and also an attender here at Park. Well, welcome. Uh, we're going to begin by asking each of you to reflect on the readings for this week, um, and what stood out for you? What was there something in these readings that moved you, that you found stirring, either inspiring or, or upsetting, that you'd like to share? Who'd like to start? Um, I really appreciated both of the, um, the ally, like how to be an ally, um, just in general, but also for the LGBTQIA community. Um, I really appreciated both of those. Specifically, just the ally in general. I guess I wasn't expecting it to be so, like, detailed. Like a lot of it, you just I thought would be more just oh, this is automatic. But they really covered a lot of aspects, and it was very specific. Um, and I really appreciated that. So that stood out to me. Uh, one thing I really liked from the waking up white book is just uh. Debbie talks a lot about just being humble and admitting your mistakes and learning from your mistakes. Uh, I really like that, and I think that's a really good example for uh, white people like me. Um, and I also liked about when she was talking about uh, getting to know your own culture, and just uh, that's been a little bit of a journey for me too in the last 10 years or so. I was talking to a friend from Norway and just some culture questions and just realize a lot of my family is really culturally Norwegian and just connecting that because whiteness isn't a culture, um, but Norwegian is a culture. So I just appreciate how she talked about that a little bit too, kind of brought up a lot of my learning journey. Um, a part of the book that really stuck out to me was the part of the ally list where it talked about where it talked about if you wanted to become an ally, a thing you like probably shouldn't do is kind of ask all of your questions and kind of gather information from the marginalized group. And it's kind of saying how you need to do the research on your own and like, yeah, it's okay to have questions and ask them, but also like the whole thing of being an ally is understanding that you gotta get there on your own and it's okay to need help, but like you shouldn't depend on them to teach you what you should already know kind of if you want to. Um, I liked a lot about it. Um, I liked that the ally list was beyond even just <clears throat> race, but also kind of opened my eyes to like ability and stuff like that. Um, some things that maybe I, I need to read up on more, you know? Um, and something that was frustrating to me was um, <clears throat> when she talked about kind of how our school systems are set up to teach um, kind of independent learning and, and how she talked about the Asian student who um, once she kind of understood why she kept going over to help the other friend what how she learned and how she could um, be appreciated in that and I just think how many kids are not being seen probably in our school systems so that was frustrating to me <clears throat> And I like to not just be frustrated about it, I guess, but then it makes me wonder, like, what can we all do? You know, we're probably all from a lot of different school systems. Like, what ways we can all speak up, you know? Thank you. Um, the uh, uh, readings this week also included a bias test that you can go online and, and try, and so I think each of the panelists had a chance to do that, and all of us did. So, um, if you tried it, what did you learn? It's Mark, 
Um, I took the uh, skin tone test. Um, this is my sister uh, here, and um, there are five of us, and I'm number one, and she's number three. And um, the two of us are the darkest of the five, and she is the darkest of all five of us. And we, I'll speak on my own experience, but I um, really struggled with my skin tone and being darker. Um, I have three siblings who are the same skin tone as my mom, um, so they're lighter. And just, I've noticed growing up that in the African American black community, um, it's a, or, well just in general, not even just in the African American community, but in general, lighter brown is more beautiful, supposedly. And so I grew up with that um, interpretation. Um, and so I just thought it'd be interesting to take the skin tone test and see what came about. And it, it said the word moderately. I moderately prefer darker skin. Um, people to lighter skinned people. And that shocked me. I was expecting actually the complete opposite. But um, I think I've just kind of, especially since being an adult and just seeing more shades and um, meeting people without those internal restrictions on how they see themselves, I've, I, I believe I have formed more of an appreciation for the skin tone that I do have and the one that my sister has and the one that my father has. Um, and just the darker colors in general. Really um, learning to love and believe in that statement that all black is beautiful. So I was really shocked by my result on my test, but I'm not upset about it, so. <laughs> I took two of the bias tests. I took the one that compared a black and white race, and then Asian American and European American. Um, I'd taken the black and white one comparison several years ago, and uh, several, uh, more than five. And I remember being kind of a little disturbed that I wasn't as good as I wanted to be. Hmm. Good meaning like not, like having, still having a somewhat of a preference for, for white, for European American, um, even with all the reading and the learning I've been doing. So I took it again. Um, I knew it had been long enough to be fine taking it again. I wouldn't, wouldn't be cheating or something. Um, and uh, um, I blame a little bit on chemo pause, but maybe I shouldn't. Um, just that I was slower and I took it and it came out. I was really upset. Um, I was doing it in a library this afternoon, so I, I kept my calm, but it came out as a strong automatic preference for white people over black people, which is much worse than a few years ago. I didn't like that, so I did something else for a while. And then I went and did the Asian American European one and uh, came a slight automatic association for American with European American and foreign with Asian American, which uh, I wasn't surprised at. Um, even though I'm married to an Asian American, I didn't grow up with any Asian Americans. I know it's my way I've been socialized, so I wasn't surprised with that. And then I decided to go back and retake the black and white bias test again and try to see if I can answer faster this time because it's somewhat it says answer as fast as you can and I think I was trying to be good and overthink the first time maybe so I took it again and I got a slight automatic preference for European Americans mm -hmm. over African Americans um, which it's not surprising to me for the same reasons and I was more happy with but I don't think it's a test that can be cheated yeah, still got some feelings about that, as you can see with my red face right now. <laughs> so I also took the race one of the African American versus white, and I wasn't surprised with my results. It was that I was equal, I was as close as I could be to liking both races, black and white, but I was uh, faster with choosing the African American over the white people, and um, I wasn't really surprised because I've grown up in a like predominantly white area and I feel like maybe not accommodated but I've just kind of like learned to kind of accept and just kind of go with the flow over there but I am a lot more comfortable and I feel a lot less judged when I'm around people who look like me and act like me and so I wasn't so surprised because it was not 100% equal but it was as close as it could be and that made me feel comfortable because I know that it wasn't like 
oh, I always like black people always get to fly. Like, you know, it wasn't like that. It was like a fair, even, this is what you can be, but this is what you're used to, which is what I was used to and what I am at home. And so I wasn't really upset with my results. I think it could be different maybe in a couple of years or if I were to retake it at a different time, but I, I don't know, I don't hate my results right now. Um, mine was a, a slight preference for African Americans over European Americans. Um, that didn't surprise me, but I found it very interesting that at the end it talks about, it says not enough research is, like says for sure that you can change implicit bias or reduce it. And I thought that would not have been my result. I grew up in a like super white um, part of Iowa. <laughs> so I just think, um, I don't know, that kind of, and now I'm, I mean, my husband's black, my children are biracial. We talk about race like it's a conversation thing all the time. So I just think there's no way that couldn't have affected that a little bit. Um, and I don't think that would have been my result previously. So to me, that gave some hope that what work can be done to, um, to, to change your, even your thinking. All right, thank you very much. Uh, last question for our panel before we uh, break into the larger small group conversations turns to the work of uh, dismantling racism and going from just being an aware bystander to an ally. And uh, Debbie Irving uh, traces through this last part of her book some chapters about that process for her. And then uh, this ally list, uh, both of the ally lists that Pastor Gia offered to us um, also highlight that work. So the uh, question is, if uh, what's your take on the ally list? Um, we've already started a conversation about them as, as we open, but I would ask um, a, a few more questions about that. One is, if you're a member of a consider yourself a member of a marginalized group, looking at this list, what do you think of it? Do you think, it, what is its utility? Um, and the same question really for all the panelists. What, what is here that you find useful in, uh, in this work? Um, and then if, if there is an experience that you've had that you can recall that, that you'd like to share, and you certainly don't have to, but if, if there is, where you think this ally list would have come in handy in some past experience or conversation where people involved could have used some of these ideas and action steps um, for a, a better, more transformational interaction. Amari, you're our starter. You ready? <laughs> I can't be. Uh, Um, so as I said earlier, I really appreciated that they were specific, that there was like more than one page. <coughs> well, not on the LGBTQIA one, it was actually one page, but it was very straightforward. Like, and I agree, there's no beating around the bush. Like, I really appreciated that. But the other one, um, just being an ally in general, was very specific. Um, I do consider myself a member of a marginalized community. Um, and when I, I, the only experience, well, there are actually a lot, but the one that comes to mind, um, I have a sister who is 20 and we're three years apart, but we were always in the same school. So um, when she was sixth grade, I was eighth, when, I was a fr when she was a freshman, I was a senior. Like we were always together and <coughs> I have, and she's a lighter, um, lighter skin tone. She looks just like my mom. Um, and I have been standing right next to her and witnessed her receive preferential treatment over me. Um, which, I mean, it hurts. And especially when you're younger and you don't understand. But when I got older and I could see that's racist. That's racist. <laughs> you know, you understand and it hurts. You know, <coughs> it hurts at all times. But when you're younger, you don't really understand. You can kind of just brush it off. But I've, you know, She's been given food before me. She's been told to come do things before me, just at school. Like, and it shouldn't be like that. But 
it was hard because we grew up in the same house. We're told all the time, you know, you're different ages, right? But you're equal. You know, you're sisters. You're the same, um, same parents, same siblings, same love. You're the same person. Um, but that happened quite a bit. Um, and I'm, I haven't seen her, and she works on a cruise ship. I haven't seen her since April, but I'm pretty sure that if we're still together, I don't think things would be very different. Um, and another experience I can recall, I spoke on the first panel, and then I have been on vacation, and um, I went to Virginia with um, my significant other, who he's way, he's a darker complexion than me, and we had the same experiences between the two of us, where I received preferential treatment over him. You know, and um, so that's just, that's what I think of when I think of these, where like, the ally list would have been great right here, right? Like, you should read this, lady or punch lady, whoever you are. Um, it just, I'm gonna go back to it being specific again, it brings up the things that to me, I'm like, that's obvious why I'm writing it down, but like, people genuinely don't think about these things. Um, and so those are the two instances that I would think of. I really appreciated reading the ALA lists. Um, I thought they were uh, just, yeah, really good. I think that they're very detail oriented. Um, I like uh, the point a lot of it's not about me, because um, I, I find that that's really easy to bring it all back around uh, around me about my feelings, uh, my thoughts, stuff like that. Especially even when I hurt somebody else. So I appreciate uh, that. Um, I do not consider myself uh, in any part of any marginalized group. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot to that. Uh, like I said earlier, the being the hum humble and reviewing that list is uh, uh, really key. I think because of that, um, I like the part two. Um, when it says, uh, keep a sense of humor. Um, it doesn't, you know, you can, learning to laugh at yourself and your mistakes, making them right, making things right when you make mistakes, but learning and being able to, uh, yeah, laugh at, laugh at yourself, or, yeah. Um, yeah, there's been times where it would've been nice if I had this list in the past, um, like my wife and I, with living, living in the US, living overseas in Asia, we kind of had to have our own list, kind of our own way of doing things. We're like, okay, we're gonna be in this situation with these people, I should say this thing. Or this time it should be you, because you know, they'll hear it from, from you better than they'll hear it from me. But in this situation, maybe the same thing where different people all say it. Uh, so we're trying to team together because it's a different situation, different people. Um, I see the alley list is, uh, could have been more, even more helpful for us in those situations. So I'm very glad I have it now. Um, my favorite part of the alley list is the part that nothing really starts until people understand that there is an issue and that they acknowledge it. And if I'm gonna piggyback off my sister, I, out of the five of us, I'm probably like the quietest one out of the bunch. Like I just have a hard time um, wanting to talk about things and expressing myself. And so when there's an issue with racism, I usually try to like not bring it up because I never want to seem like I'm complaining or that like I'm ungrateful for the progress that we have made. But while there has been like issues with lighter skin tones being preferred over mine, there's also been a weird type of maybe fetish that whenever someone talks to me, they feel like they have to bring up my complexion or they have to bring up my race, where it's always like, oh, like the black girl over there, and I'm like, oh, like the aunt, like Anya, the one who's in like classes, you know, just something like that, where it feels like my race is always um, used to identify me and it's almost like um, people use it as a way to talk to me and get to know me, whereas I would prefer that not be as, like the way it goes. And that's where it gets hard for me because I feel like they're trying to learn or sometimes they just don't fully understand that like the way they go about things, even though it seems completely innocent and like, oh, like I'm learning, but it can also be really harmful when you're 
certain innocent questions can be um, perceived in a different way. And so that's been really hard for me is like trying to find a way to be nice about it and be um, confident enough to bring that up and where I'm, where like the line is drawn for me. And so the ally list where it kind of goes about um, understanding for yourself and learning for yourself, but also just understanding there is an issue and wanting to educate yourself so that the marginalized group like I would think I'm in um, doesn't feel like they have to teach you or be there for you and hold your hand when you figure that out. Let's see. <laughs> I just wrote down a bunch of things because whenever it's time for me to say something <laughs> in front of people, I won't remember it. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see. Uh, some of the things that just stuck out to me were valid. It's an uh, ally's job to validate. And I think of how many times I will validate someone else, but then my own husband will say something to me. And I know how many times I've invalidated him or you know when you know somebody really well you're like oh but maybe you just did this or you know um so anyways that's been a, a good um eye opener for me um is to that my job is to validate not to judge or tell someone what they felt was not for real um i like the definition of ally which is works to end oppression in his or her own personal life and I thought that that really puts the work on the individual, <clears throat> right? Rather than, um, I don't know, trying to change everybody else, but you're trying to change yourself, and then hopefully some of that maybe spreads. But um, um, said to be effective, you need to develop your skills to communicate the knowledge you have gained. And I think that's maybe one of the hardest ones for myself is that um, I don't, think I don't feel very articulate quite often and I um, start fumbling on my words. So I think that like as a Midwestern white person who's not been taught to be comfortable talking about race, um, that's something I really want to like learn my, I just want to learn to be able to talk about it more and more comfortably so that I can share at least like I think part of my job is to um, talk about it with my other white friends, um, those conversations. So anyways, learning my, how to articulate that better. Um, yeah, I think that's the main stuff. Can I just add, can I add? Um, so I feel like I glazed, I glazed over the, the LGBTQIA ally list and I called it straightforward. Um, but I wanna speak more on that because I just, I'm thinking. And um, I, I don't think I personally identify as a member of that marginalized community, but my mother does. Um, and that's new to us and that's a new community that my family, like my siblings and I are learning how to be a part of and be supportive of. Um, this is a whole new type of racism, you know, that we have never experienced, you know, and so to be there alongside her, to be with her on this journey, um, you have to learn how to be supportive, you know, and so some of those things on that list, it, it's very short, it is straightforward, but it is, it is so needed, and I think that this journey that um, my mother is on in finding herself and learning how to love herself would be a lot less painful if, um, the ally list if people were more aware of it. And so I'm I'm not necessarily speaking for her, but I think just as a backseat driver in that, you know, in that new community, um, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you, Ma. And thanks to each of you. I think what makes these conversations so valuable is that you you each are sharing real life real personal experience and, and opening up. And that's what creates the possibility for community too, I think. So we're going to move to the next part of our program and Bert is gonna come up and lead our small group discussion.